morning. I'd like to start off by saying, do you know how much you paid for disposing of your waste last week, last month? Do you know how government works? I, I've, I'm, I've worked for Catawba County. I'm the director of utilities and engineering, and I can't tell you how many times I'm, I'm called for a week where I immediately recognize people don't understand how their government works, the layers of government, and I know it's quite complicated. But what we're talking about today is Catawba County's Eco Complex, a study in waste management and renewable energy and synergetic relationships. It's really about industrial ecology, as John had mentioned to you earlier. Everything relates in life, everything. You can use the eco in that is economics, ecology, or an ecological system. And what we're looking at is really, truly, a symbiotic relationships but this, this is really an industrial ecology chart, how things relate. We, they're, they're, the old saying that, that one person's garbage is, is another person's treasure, and that's, that's true. Really what we're trying to do is, is marry up by streams with in streams with different industries, maybe even between households, whatever that may be. Years ago we had people, we called them dumpster divers. They would go into the dumpster and pull things out of the dumpsters that they could use. And really what we're saying, hey, that's a... That's a great thing if you can get something out of a dumpster and you can use it, but it's dangerous and we don't allow you to do that. But, but the key is to try to capture that before it ever gets into the dumpster. But really, as we move through, the first step is always we, we once had dumps and then we moved to landfills, and the, the landfills are quite uh, very, very much like wastewater treatment plants now. They are very, very protected and they're, they're very safe, but it's still not what we need to do with solid waste. Our Blackburn, Blackburn uh, landfill that we have here in Catawba County, and we only accept the waste from Catawba County, and we're currently at 485 tons per day, six days per week. And what that, having a little trouble there, what that, what that means is is does industrial ecology work? We started in 2000 with this concept and now we're 12 years later. When we started, we were at 650 tons of waste per day. So yes, it, it does work. It's a combination of many things and we can say, okay, well, I'm recycling at my household. That's good that you are, but you need to recognize that 78% of our waste comes from industrial and commercial re, uh, uh, commer uh, businesses. So. No matter how much you recycle at your house, we're only touching 22% if, if we recycle everything in our house. The majority of it's done by businesses. How do we get businesses to recycle? A lot of businesses recycle because they want to change their image. Some of our, our contributors to, to, our, to food and drink today are, are some of those. But in the end, it matters, does, does it make money or does it save money? One thing I want to mention here is we've been creating energy from landfill gas now 13 years. We did it before it was sexy. We did it before they talked about it nationally. We and Monterey, California were the ter first two to do it. Did you know that? Does Hickory know that? What is interesting, I had Channel 9 News from Charlotte come up and do a coverage of us. I guess it was about two years ago. And I said, where were you 10 years ago? Where were you? It becomes sexy, everybody wants to talk about it. They want to talk about green energy. Or uh, the, they add fancy word, words to it when it's really symbiotic relationships. What do we do with this? We, we produce three megawatts of electricity per hour. That electrifies about 1,400 homes. Could do more if you build LEED certified homes quite a bit more. What have we sold? We've sold $5.3 million of electricity to Duke Energy over that period. What did that money do for you? We haven't changed the price of what it cost you to put, to dispose of your waste. This is Catawba County at the landfill since I've walked in the door 17 years ago, but one time, and that's because your state the state of North Carolina added a taxation to it. That's the only time. Because we enacted this eco-complex, the concept of 
making something from anything that we can get, deriving energy from anything that comes, minimizing energy like John had said earlier. How do we go about fostering that? My thoughts were, let's get the universities involved. Let's get the young people involved. I'm, at, I'm getting towards the end of my career. Who, and be honest with you, the, the, the Yenbacher system, the GE Yenbacher systems that we create electricity with took five years from, from conceptual to actually producing energy. You'll see several things here in a minute that we've been in five, six, seven years. We started this in 2000. It's a walk. It's not a run. It's a walk. I wish I could be like the first speaker and get out here and run the marathon, but, but unfortunately, I'm, I'm pulling this big weight behind me, and it's a political weight. It's a political weight. Here, here we have uh, the, the biodiesel facility, our partner, Appalachian State University, and in, in this facility, we grow our own crops around the perimeter of the landfill, about 250 acres of crops. This is actual photographs from our past crops. The sunflower crop is the crop that's uh, our summer crop. It's somewhere around 70 gallons per acre that we can create a biodiesel from this. Winter crop's much better. Canola, uh, it's, it's, it's blooming now. It comes off in, in spring. It, it, grows, it goes dormant in the winter and then you harvest it in the spring. Much better, about 140 gallons per acre, some, somewhere in there. And, and of course, we're doing research with ASU with different hybrids of seeds. And, and, and so if you see in the press, oh, the county had to dispose of this or that, uh, don't take that as a negative thing. We, we're looking at particular plots. We may plant particular seeds under certain conditions to see what they do. And why should we do that? Well, one is that's part of what government should do. We should be building the platform for our farmers to succeed in what they do. That's part of our job. That's the part of the we, we the people. It's what we should do. And so that's what we are doing. We're trying to build and understand crops for Western North Carolina. That's what we got a million dollars from the Gold Leaf Foundation to do. The university got that. Department of Energy, the U.S. Department of Energy has put money in our facility. This is a rotation crop of soybean. It's about 60 gallons uh, per acre that it produces. And again, it's about rotating and understanding how we deal with crops. I was talking to Senator Burr's staff when we were going after grant money, and I want to say that his staff was very helpful in getting grant money in the beginning of this, but I want to say that the initial conversation is about we don't want to displace, displace food crops. What is interesting here is when you look at the ecological system, there's a rotation. A farmer has to rotate crop in order to keep the nutrients in the soil that they need. What we're talking about is let's make the rotation between marrying up farmers with us, which we have. We, we've working with the farming community to add different, uh, their, their different uh, sites, crops, and then we're able to rotate the rotational crops between food crops, energy crops, and then what we'll call soil crops, putting, crop, putting crops in that help uh, bring the soil nutrients to their, to their optimum value. So this is really, when you look at the eco-complex and why government should be doing this, is, is the marrying of different parts of, the, of our society, from business to farming to you. We're just now, uh, just got uh, completed our uh, bioprocessing facility. And what does this mean? Before we were crushing this with, a, with, a, with a, a temporary crusher that we can move from ASU campus to our campus and it's in a trailer, what, we, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to go to pressing our own oil and then we want to lease that oil to restaurants. And then we, at the end of that lease, we want to bring it back to the facility and make fuel with it. And so it becomes more of creating a larger circle of how things work and, and work together in an ecological system. And it takes a different, it's a different science involved in creating biodiesel. Biodiesel is not the same as running your car off French fry oil, by the way. So it's a different component. It's just different elements in it. We, part of the money that we got from the uh, Department of Energy, Appalachian State University, we developed uh, a car, and this car is for 
It's tied with a dynamometer, which I don't have a picture with, but if you want to come and tour our site, please do. We have a dynamometer. Other than race shops, we're the only ones in North Carolina that have it. But what we have it there for is to do testing on emissions, on energy, value in feedstocks. We're also doing algae to biofuel. And the interesting thing here is before we got this dynamometer, when we would run tests, we'd put a student in the car and they would drive to ASU and drive back and then we would read all, the, we'd, you, we'd take the data and we would look at it. We, we determined that it doesn't matter whether the same student does it, does it every time using different fuels, it always comes back. We don't know whether it was the same drive or not. Did they get stopped by a stoplight? Did they drive a little faster, drive a little slower? But what the dynamometer allows us to do is to run the same course every single time and then we can look at B5, B10, B15, B20. We can look at how the energy changes within uh, the output and we can understand how, what it does to the actual equipment, whether that's a car or uh, heavy equipment on the landfill. It's great for a lot of reasons. Again, I mentioned earlier having young people around to carry on, but, but really uh, having young people and, and, and diversity within a group, it, it really brings out these types of things. And what makes us different? What makes this system different? They were doing this in Germany in World War I. There, there's, they've been making, they've been making uh, a diesel fuel out of uh, uh, or gasifying wood for, since the First World War. What makes this different is this is able to strip the tars out of it so they can run it in an internal combustion engine at long periods of time without it tarring up the pistons. And that's what makes it different. I won't get into all the science of it, but it is de indeed the first of its kind. Uh, I've been in research in Goosing, Austria for 11 years, and, and I've been able to be involved in that, but this, this particular system is like the fourth, fourth generation of, of that. What else is at the eco-complex? Well, part of the eco-complex was obviously marrying the synergetic relationships, and, and when you have a landfill, you end up with property around the landfill that you, you borrow soil from, because it takes a lot of soil to operate landfills and to build landfills. So what we wanted to do is we, as we ended up getting all the soil we could get off a particular property, we wanted to turn it to a tax paying entity, but we wanted an entity to be within, these, in, within this eco system that we have derived. And so we ended up going out looking uh, for an entity to use the heat from the GE and Bakker engines that burn the landfill gas. They put out about 740 degree Fahrenheit heat uh, during the process off of the exhaust and about 240 off the cooling area of the engine. We went out looking for, the, for a company. Uh, this company, Gregory Wood Products, ended up locating here on, on the Eco Complex. We're the first thought of them using that, that uh, heat derived from the Yenbarker units to dry their timber. But as you can see, 65,000 board feet hours, a lot of timber, and we didn't have the energy to, to dry that much material. But what we did say is, if the woody biomass, we could use the woody biomass to create additional energy, that was more energy than they needed, and we could intertwine that with the other energy that we had, and we could go for more, we could use it as a resource to bring other companies to this site. So we did that. It employs 115 people. They have a flat ad valorem tax, which means they pay a minimum ad valorem tax annually, whether it appraises for that or not, or the higher value. It was a really good deal for Catawba County. Our second company was Pallet One, and this is Pallet One's only recycling plant in the U.S. They totally recycle at this facility. This facility has the capability of building new pallets, but we were able to, we were able to uh, arrange contracts for this company to where they can do 100% recycling. What makes this great for the eco-complex or the ecology of this system is the, is the busted up wood, wood boards that they take off the pallets and put new wood boards on. They marry up with very wood products on the new board side and we marry up on the back side using it in the wood gasifier. The busted board boards are able to be energy derived to carry on other, other uh, fuel other resources. Get into university research. These are, this is, this is uh, I think, amazing in itself. And, and how we've been able to marry numerous universities in doing research at our site. And, and it's really, really a great teaching 
I can't, I can't tell you when you, this summer, I want, to, I want to say that we had seven students from seven different universities that came to our site and built the biodiesel facility that, that I mentioned earlier. If you come out to our site and visit it, seven students, very diverse, uh, built this. They learned how to weld. Our, our welders, we have welders that work for the county at, at, the, at the landfill, and we, we taught them how to weld. They had hands-on teaching. Great environment. Uh, the biodiesel, the biodiesel, uh, Appalachian State's using, uh, doing the research on the biodiesel. Just a couple of things, you know, a couple of shots of some of the things that they're researching. Uh, also, uh, anaerobic, anaerobic uh, bio, bioreactor landfill gas management. Really, that's trying to create more energy from from the landfill, keeping the landfill at optimum temperatures and moisture for creating microorganisms. Uh, University of Charlotte's doing algae research, uh, multi-feed anaerobic digestion, uh, syn gas, wood ethanol, and that's what's happening out at our site. And I, I wish you'd come out and see us. Uh, please call, set up, set up, set up a time. We'd love to give you a tour of the facility. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and look into what government's doing and what we're doing for you. Thank you.